I've been asked to talk about some of my favorite Star Trek episodes. I've never heard of the show, but I hear it's quite good. Well, you know, if you had to ask me, I'm going to be, it's very boring. It's sort of like saying, what's your favorite movie, Citizen Kane? Yeah, I mean, it's true, but it doesn't sound very exciting. And I would have to say that in the case of Star Trek, my favorite episode has to be the classic City on the Edge of Forever. City on the Edge of Forever was a remarkable episode which uh, paired the creative collaboration of such genre luminaries as Harlan Ellison, Gene Kuhn, Dorothy Fontana, and Gene Roddenberry to create one of the most remarkable pieces of television I've ever seen. Um, when you think of the look on Shatner's face when he loses Edith Keeler, uh, it is uh, truly uh, uh, brings tears to your eyes. And as we said in um, Free Enterprise, the only time it's all right for a man to cry is at the end of Field of Dreams and maybe when Spock died. I'm one of the uh, bunch of friends who are uh, chronicled uh, fictitiously in this film, Free Enterprise. And uh, I've uh, pretty much been a Star Trek fan moderately, all right, intensely, since, uh, oh, I was about six years old. I was always more the Star Wars geek of the group, uh, and I certainly was not as big of, a, of an original series geek as the rest of them, so I'm kind of here to stand up for the notion of Next Gen as being the only Star Trek that I ever really loved, and that kind of brought me into that fold. It was the only one I was ever maniacal enough about to win trivia contests and wear costumes at conventions and such. My most memorable Star Trek episode was uh, the first one I ever saw, and I remember very distinctly, uh, I was probably about seven years old, and uh, I was living in Richmond, Virginia. I remember we were on Sierra Road, one of the, the first, my earliest memories of childhood were in this house, and my mother came in and told the family that there's this new show that was everybody's talking about it and it's called Star Trek and we're all gonna watch it as a family and uh, so we all piled in and we had one of these huge old uh, it was it was a color TV set but it was as big as a dishwasher and, and uh, you, you complete with the rabbit ears on the top and so we tuned in and uh, we were watching the, we started to watch the show and uh, my brothers and I were fascinated with it, and and uh, the it was it was the man trap. It was the one where they had uh, the salt vampires, and and the the crew of the Inter the Enterprise would beam down, and they would they would uh, um, different members of the of the crew, of the crew would disappear. Of course, it was always the uh, security, the guys in red, and they they would disappear, and all they would be, all that would be left would just be their their uniform and then where their hands and feet were with like just this like uh dusty residue and uh what, what stands out on this for me is is uh um both my little brother and i we had nightmares about it for uh for years or not really years but for months after that and we put in my my older brother would come and torment us and he'd come in with his hands and he was pretend like he was a salt vampire and he was going to leave these marks on our face and uh, so uh, my mother banned Star Trek for about a year. We were unable to watch Star Trek, and uh, that's where the, st the, the Star Trek mystique started for me. Mirror Mirror is a remarkable episode, which paved the way for many episodes to follow, and was probably the high point of the uh, Star Trek Enterprise series as well. For those of you who may have watched it, all six of you, um, In a Mirror Darkly, uh, was a wonderful extension of the Mirror Universe, and seeing the Defiant, which was set up in the Tholian web, was really fun. And I think it's a chance for the characters to really come out of their shells and show a different side of them. The Doomsday Machine, you can't find a more uh, insane Commodore than Matt Decker. He's uh, absolutely amazing. And Kirk is just so smooth, even under immense pressure, even though he's on a ship that is busted to pieces, is basically sputtering smoke, he, uh, he still knows what to do, because he's the man. I would also defend episodes like Spectre of the God, the Western episode, which a lot of people would make fun of me for, but I thought it was so surrealistic and, and so interestingly uh, uh, done, along with uh, some very remarkable um, cinematography and direction that made it, uh, I think, uh, better than what was actually on the page. Um, Lee Cronin was the pseudonym used by um, 
Gene Kuhn, the brilliant Gene Kuhn, the late brilliant Gene Kuhn, uh, who wrote that episode and took his name off of it because he was very unhappy with the rewrite. But in fact, I think it's quite an engaging episode. I may just be partial to it because I like westerns. You know, to me, it's the it's the whole package. But you gotta love uh, uh, Nimoy and Shatner together. Just the, the two of them together, I always thought was uh, was just just the the coolest team because they were so different but they were they 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 worked so well together somebody just stepped in let's see what they have to say hey it's chuck speed chuck speed come on over here chuck speed was instrumental in the distribution of free enterprise and i i, I and without him i don't think he would have ever seen the line of projected bulb but uh, i also am going to put him on the spot and ask him a question for which he has no answer what's your favorite star trek episode chuck speed you're right, I have no answer. <laughs> trouble with Tribbles. Trouble with Tribbles, how about that? He left that one out. So, uh, Trouble with Tribbles. What do you like about Trouble with Tribbles, Chuck? Uh, lots of Tribbles. Lots of Tribbles. Uh, original series. I know, you know, I did have some episodes I like. You gotta love the Horda. You gotta love Devil in the Dark. But I'm not gonna give the original series too many props because I'm sure every other sycophantic idiot on this disc is doing that in my place. Episodes of note in the subsequent series? Nope. One of the most uh, important speeches ever given by Shatner was a, a Return to Tomorrow, where he talks about risk being our business. And Eric McCormick beautifully aped this in uh, his speech when he brings Claire and uh, Robert uh, back together. Um, and uh, I've tried it subsequently and it did not work for me. Do you wish Brett never loved Scarlet. Rick didn't have Ilsa, or Harry never loved Sally. Someone once said it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. My favorite episode of Star Trek is kind of tough to pin down, but uh, I guess I would have to say for entertainment's sake, it would have to be the Omega Glory. I know that it's uh, wacky and it's uh, incredibly unbelievable that the Enterprise crew can come on a uh, an exact duplicate of our societal evolution in some sort of uh, Stone Age version, um, and that uh, finding uh, an American flag, albeit tattered, on an alien planet is entirely ludicrous. However, Shatner's rendition of the Constitution of the United States is perhaps the most dramatic presentation of that document ever presented, including when it was first written. What, what do I like about other Star Treks? The Next Generation, well, Best of Both Worlds, of course, a, a wonderful two-part episode which um, featured the Borg, uh, but uh, one of the episodes that doesn't get the credits due is Maurice Hurley's uh, wonderful Q Who, which introduced the Borg for the first time. It was very mysterious and, and really captured the strangeness and enigmatic nature of being in space. In addition, uh, uh, The Measure of a Man, in which uh, showcased Brent Spiner's uh, great acting ability and also had some of those questions that, again, speak to the very heart of what Star Trek is about and what humanity is about. Next Generation. Well, there was that one where uh, Scotty visited. That was a good one. I think, at the end of the day, yesterday's Enterprise is probably not only, oh, hey, is not only the best uh, Next Gen episode, but is the best, certainly the best Star Trek, and more, more so than that, probably one of the best hours of science fiction ever done. Uh, I also really have always been a big fan of Who Watches the Watchers. Uh, I think it had an important message behind it. And I think that, uh, what was it called? Lower Decks. Lower Decks was always a good one, wasn't it? with its whole Rosencrantz and Guildenstern type view of life aboard the Enterprise. Deep Space Nine? Uh, didn't they go back to uh, the Tribble episode in that one? I think that was pretty good too. Deep Space, Space Nine I watched for a while. Um, Voyager I never really got into until later when I when it came out on DVD and then I got, it, got into it. Next Generation I was a fan. I watched that uh, fairly religiously, and then the, the new Enterprise. Uh, I, I I was a big fan of that. I really liked, uh, uh, you know, Star Trek Enterprise, and I was one of the few that did. And it didn't last long, but uh, that was uh, definitely um, uh, 
on my list of top shows to watch. And I was very sorry to see it go off the air, to tell you the truth. Star Trek remains an incredibly prescient show. And if we look at so much in our lives today, that uh, whether it be the cell phone in my pocket, our iPods, um, our uh, uh, PDAs, our uh, GPSs, this, these were things that all, uh, I think, were foreshadowed by Star Trek. And ironically, none of the later shows really um, were able to um, uh, be as prescient as the original Star Trek. When you look back and see at the 60s, we didn't even have sliding supermarket doors, and the Enterprise, you know, had that. And uh, later on, all they could come up with was holodeck. Some actors, I, uh, I'm able to, uh, to, to establish a rapport with and, and have it uh, uh, natural and unrestrained, and, and you be kind of become friends. And, and Bill became that. And that you know we we like to smoke cigars together, so that was our first thing. So we would sit out and and have cigars, and then it turned out that uh, you know he's he's uh, very much into horses and has a uh, 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 a horse farm, and uh, I believe it's it's Tennessee. Um, but I'm from Virginia, and I grew up around horses, so we had that in common. We talked about about that a lot. Working with Bill Shatner was one of the true highlights of my life. To have the opportunity to work with your childhood idol and make a film that goes on to international acclaim is a thrill, and to be able to have gone with him to the Cannes Film Festival uh, was even more exciting. I have a very um, fond memories of walking along the Crescette as Shatner gazed lovingly along the beaches and said, Topless? Topless is good. That's why I love Bill Shatner, and that's why I love Star Trek. 40 years, it's been almost 40 years since the original Star Trek premiered, and for maybe the younger audience, it looks a little silly, the special effects are a little shop worn, but uh, more than any other show, it's the philosophy and the characters that continue to stand the test of time, and uh, continues to deserve the, to be lauded the way, and, 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 and the way we have. Yes, Free Enterprise can be looked at as a movie that revels in nostalgia, but I think it's more than that. I think it speaks to a time where people weren't negative, where people weren't cynical, but uh, people actually believed and had hope in the future, and it was an optimism that the world, and by, by extension the universe, could be a better place. Um, yes, the 60s had all kinds of problems, but people were trying to make the world better, and I think that you know it's very easy to lose sight of that in today's troubled times, and uh, in a way, when Star Trek itself lost sight of it, that is when it started to begin its descent uh, into irrelevance. And it's one thing as Star Trek fans uh, that we continue to hope is that Star Trek will once again gain its relevance and become a popular um, franchise, uh, re-energizing and perhaps finding an all-new audience and inspiring them the way that the original Star Trek inspired me and so many of my friends and contemporaries uh, who were involved in the making of Free Enterprise.